conversations with Kimi. Hey, hey. Hello, my name is Ajibola Tajuddin, but you can call me Kimi, and today you're watching Conversations with Kimi, a show where we usually ask stuff and make stuff. But for this season, we'll be checking in with some old friends and some new friends to talk a little bit about what's going on recently with Corona and with Black Lives Matter and some other things and how to stay creative and to become a leader in your community during this time. Uh, this is Kristen Huffman, who is the producer and of Conversations with Kimi, an artistic director of the New Paradigm Theater, and also the editor of um, Conversations with Kimi. So she'll be here checking in just a little bit. Our guest today is Carl Carter, who's a musician and musical director and songwriter for many networks. I love him and you guys will love him too. Carl, can you talk a little bit about um, where we might know you from and who we might know who worked with you? I worked um, and was musical director and bass player for uh, Brian McKnight tour for many years. Um, with Will Downing, Misha Paris, who's uh, an English uh, R&B singer. Um, I actually was in the Spin Doctors for a hot minute as well. Uh, Aaron Neville, I played with Aaron Neville, Dizzy Gillespie, and different others. So um, that's where you might know me from. What was it like working with people like Dizzy, uh, who's iconic and a legend? It was quite amazing. I only did uh, a one night, three show, gig with him in New York City at the Blue Note. Mm -hmm. But it was, it, it was one of the most amazing experiences because someone of that legend, you just sit and listen to him. And he's always teaching you when he's just, he's just talking, he's just talking about different situations that he was in or just talking about different musical situations. And you just, you just learn so much in a very short period of time. It's very, very dense, if you will. I and mean, I, I just had the best time for that one night, just changed my life. You've worked with some Broadway musicals too, like Come From Away, and you worked with people yeah. like Billy Porter, right? What was that like yes. with Billy? Billy Porter is so real and obviously just incredibly talented. And he just lets you be you because he is who he is. And in that situation, you're just, everyone is just following his lead and to just be an original and be who you are. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I love that about him. He's just, he just warms my heart. I've worked with him a few times actually. And just, just, he makes me, every time I hear his name, I just smile. So you work a lot on stage and you work a lot performing on tour and then in the studios. What is it like switching from environments a lot as a musician, not only in the pit and in the studio, but mm -hmm. also on tour a lot? Um. They're all different, but the same, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, I've been doing this quite a while. Um, I started my career touring first and recording and touring. For me, I always make sure that I'm on point and I know exactly what's happening at all times. Um, and that pretty much carries me through uh, the recording sessions that I have. I try to prepare as deeply as I can, um, as well as I can. And then the Broadway is the same thing. You know, um, I try to, there's that, that commonality there of always being prepared as much as you can, you know, and that, that has helped me just go from one situation to the next, one genre to the next. Well, I personally love jazz. I love playing instruments, musical instruments. I love my mm -hmm. violin. I love my piano. So what made right. you fall in love with the bass so much? What was it about the bass that, like, attracted you? I first started playing at age seven, I was playing drums and I played drums for seven years. Um, and just, I always loved the bass though, that, that drum bass connection was always there for me. And uh, so when I, someone suggested, why don't you try bass guitar? I was like, okay, sure. You know, cause no fear, right? You're young and you figure why not? And when I started to bass guitar, it just changed everything for me. I was fortunate enough to have those, you know, the rhythms down from drumming. So I was, I kind of got proficient quick, quickly on the instrument and started working with people almost right away, which is weird, you know, to, to, to think. But um, it just, it just spoke to me. It spoke to me across the board and I've been with it ever since. And how has your job changed being a musician during, you know, Corona, Black Lives Matter and things like that? What have you been doing to stay creative and present in the times? Yeah, it's, um, you know, going from eight shows a week, you know, from Come From Away to nothing, you know, 
or to total like stopping um, was is is weird. But you know, obviously a lot of reflection just personally. Um, but musically, what's been amazing for me is I've been able to. Uh, I used to write a lot. You know, when I wasn't you know doing a Broadway show, I write every day. Just whatever came to my mind, whatever came to my heart, I was writing, trying to get it down. And um, and now I'm kind of revisiting that. I'm revisiting a lot of the songs that I wrote many years ago um, and just find myself all of a sudden with, with an album's worth or two albums worth of, of, of material. Well, our producer and artistic director has a few questions for you also. So Kristen, would you like to start your questions? Okay, yeah. I understand that you have a son who's been on Broadway. What show? Yes. He was in The Lion King on the road for a year. What part? Playing young Simba. Okay, young Simba. how old was he? He was 10. Okay. As a parent, as a mm -hmm. teacher, what are ways that you would suggest and that you have to speak to young people, maybe that age, about mm -hmm. racism, about how they might, no matter what industry they go into, whether it's our industry or whether mm -hmm. it's another industry, how do you start to talk to your child and, and help me as well with some of my friends who just, ha it's not that they would consider themselves racist, but they don't know what they mm -hmm. don't know. And right. how do you start right. a conversation um, with a young person, especially a, a person who's not a person of color? How do you start that conversation? What are your advice? Right. Our son, I talked to him earlier on, you know, around when he was 10, because he was going in an industry and, you know, he was, there were certain things that were happening to him um, where, you know, he felt alienated because of his color. And this is at nine, 10 years old. So we had, we started that conversation even before that, actually. But when it was started happening to him, I just had to just explain to him, you know, because of his color he's going to be looked on a certain way and um you know and not favorably a lot of times uh in certain situations um as far as like your you know your friends it's just just starting to have the conversations you know start asking people of color like you know like you are me about what what we're feeling and you know because it's 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 not just what i'm feeling but it's what you're feeling, you know, when we see, you know, this incident where this man is being murdered in front of our eyes, you know, we all as human beings get this visceral response. We've had this visceral response. And um, I think it's, that is what's starting the conversation. That's what is actually changing the world. As a father, what advice mm -hmm. would you give to other uh, young people out in their communities to be able to lead during this time. What the beautiful thing about what's happening now is young people are getting involved in every way, shape, and form. Um, and that gives me hope as an African American that we are going to see change. We've all, we are already seeing change in the fact that we are marching together. We are listening to one another. We are coming together, but we as, as adults need to go to them and talk to them, you know, and let them know um, what they can do to, to, to help this situation out and to, be be and to be better. All of us need to be better and have more compassion for one another, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I, I totally love that. Even me now, I have started my own protest mm -hmm. in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. For those of you watching, make sure you guys uh, come out and support on Friday, Juneteenth, Juneteenth in New Haven. Yes. Uh, me and my friends, uh, the Youth Leaders Council, have started a protest for Black Lives Matter and to celebrate the culture mm -hmm. of African American uh, lives uh, and then to hopefully uh, save lives uh, in the Absolutely. Future. You can meet us on Broadway in New Haven, and then we'll march all the way to City Hall and then to the New Haven Police Department. So make sure you guys check that out. It's from 1 to 4. Uh, for more information, you can go to my Instagram, uh, Kimi underscore Tajadeen, or check out the poster that will be right here. And thank you so much, Carl, for coming on this show. You are such an amazing addition to the Conversations with Kimi family. Um, and for you guys watching, remember that your voice is your power, so use it. Kimi, out.